So with that, uh, let's just go over briefly what we went over last week. So last week we went over tools uh, for synchronous learning, including tools like Microsoft Teams. And so I'm going to have this kind of black background, which will um, have some live transcripts. And then we'll go over some tools here. And at any time, in case you want to uh, interact with us, please make sure to use the chat here or simply raise your hand and we will um, go ahead and call on you. All right, so in the previous week, we explored some tools on synchronous learning, including using Microsoft Teams or the meeting feature specifically to organize lectures or meetings. And then we explored even using tools like the um, tabs or the integrated tools like the entire Office app application suite to conduct your learning with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and even Forms. Today, we're going to take a look at a tool called Microsoft Bookings. And Microsoft Bookings is part of the Office 365 suite of tools and allows you to do things like schedule office hours and have a page that is available for staff members, faculty, and student to check out. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to office.com, which is your landing page for all your tools. Today, we're specifically going to focus on the tool called Bookings. Microsoft Bookings allows you to create a landing page for booking time or what we call services for your different types of functions. For example, you can do office hours using this. You can do one on one meetings with students or faculty using this. You can create an entire ecosystem of bookings through Microsoft Bookings. So before we get into the nitty gritty of setting it up, let's take an example of what you may use bookings for. So for example, as a Microsoft representative, I take meetings all the time with different educators, faculty members, students, or you know customers who wish to um, know more about our technology. And so instead of kind of emailing me back and forth for different times to meet in a virtual setting, I can simply create a bookings page for a landing page for anyone to go on and book a time with me. So my page has a title of ak.ms slash book umer. And this is my bookings page. So my title's there, my name's there. The type of service that I'm offering is an initial consult, which is 30 minutes. You could imagine yourself kind of doing office hours or one on one student meeting. You can offer multiple or a single kind of consult. And in here I can see, you know, this is an online meeting. So this is not an in person office hour. This is an online meeting. And then under information, it tells me you know, more about the uh, the type of consult. The duration is 30 minutes and it tells me, you know, um, book a 30 minute consult with me to determine how Microsoft can help. OK. So I can do that. And then bookings gives me a calendar type of view for all the times available. So for example, if I was looking at times to book with myself or with Umer, and I want, you know, maybe Friday uh, the 4th, this shows me all of the times that I'm available. And I didn't make this myself. This is actually basing it off my Outlook calendar. So I didn't have to do anything different to put these times available. As you can tell, if I, for example, try to book for this Friday, the times are different because I've already had some bookings um, in my calendar. So the time adjusts on a second by second basis uh, with your calendar. 
And then once someone has booked a time and a date, they're able to put their information like name, email, and phone number, and I can make some of those optional or required. As you can note, some are optional, some are required. And so once I click on book, it actually will send me a Microsoft Teams meeting um, and put it on my calendar automatically so that everything's done and I'll get an email that notifies me that someone has made a booking. So this is the basic premise of Microsoft Bookings. It's a great landing page for you to have in order for people to schedule time with you. So how does one actually make this work? That's what we're gonna go into today. And I'll show you all of the different options that you'll have in your bookings journey. So like I said, the first place you'll go is office.com and then you'll click on the bookings item here. If you don't see it here, you can always click on the left waffle menu and find bookings in the list of all apps. There it is. Bookings will open this page right here, which will take you through different types of options that you have. Now, the first thing I'll look at is the left side here, where it shows me different things I'm a part of or different organizations. Bookings, you can make different bookings for every single opportunity that you might have. So for example, as Kara, I'm an anatomy course instructor. And so I have a bookings page set up for anatomy. But perhaps I want to create a new one for perhaps my staff or for ad admin purposes. So I can go ahead and create a new bookings here by adding the business name and business type. Again, you can just put something like you know, university admin. And you can just put education. When you specify things like the business type, it'll make the bookings a little bit more selective towards that, um, that type of education industry. And again, I can flip back and forth between different booking calendars here. So I'm gonna stick with anatomy course. Now bookings gives you some predetermined steps to do. And you can go ahead and follow that if you wish. But I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> create using the, these um, left-hand side options first. And I'll kind of walk you through all of them. So the first one is calendar. So with this calendar within bookings, you can take a look at your day calendar, your work week, your week, and your entire month of bookings. This is specific to bookings and it is not your Outlook calendar. So for example, if you want to just take a look at bookings that you have, this is a place to do that. But again, they're integrated with your Outlook calendar, so you don't necessarily need to check this page. The next one is called Booking Page. This is what I was referring to in the past, or when I showed you my booking page, how you customize that front-facing, customer-facing page. And the status will say published when it's live and ready to go. And then this is also a link that you can use to embed in your email or on your staff page. You can also control things on this bookings page. For example, you can require someone with a Microsoft 365 or Office 365 account from UIW to book, meaning random people with this link will not be able to book an appointment only people logged into their school account can. This is very useful for if you want to restrict your calendar to only people within your organization. 
You can also disable search engine searching of your booking page. You can also mention things like a privacy policy in this option here. And you can also change color and color schemes and display a custom logo. One thing that you'll always want to do is if you have students or faculty that are in different time zones, always show the time zone so that students and faculty understand when they're booking an appointment with you, it's being booked in a certain time zone. And then there are more options for scheduling time here, which I'll go over later. Once you start getting bookings, you'll see the list of people who have scheduled bookings in the customer tab. That's just a new way to keep track of everyone who scheduled a booking and kind of keep on, you know, oh, this person schedules bookings with me frequently. Let's maybe create a reoccurring event, that kind of thing. Bookings also allows for multiple staff members. So for example, if you create a anatomy course office hour booking page, you can add your TAs here by going into the add staff um, tool and then adding someone from your organization. You can add them as a person to actually uh, schedule bookings with. So for example, TAs or other uh, faculty that you work with can be scheduled or you can add them to help manage the calendar for you. Services is where you're, you're gonna add what kind of services you wanna offer. So for example, I'm gonna actually go ahead and add office hours. So I'm gonna call it office hours. And again, we're here on the services tab. And we can add a description, which all students or faculty will see. This 30 minute session is used for office hours with me on a week on a subject in the course. Please do not discuss grades or admin. The location, again, you can just say online. And over here, if you, you know, want to make it an online meeting, which I assume you do, you're going to just toggle that on. And the bookings automatically uses Microsoft Teams. Uh, that is currently the only solution for the automatic online meeting uh, within bookings. So it'll automatically create a Teams meeting for you and invite you and the person who booked the appointment. Now you can change the duration of the office hour here. And you know, if I just want 30 minutes, I can go ahead and put 30 minutes here. And by the way, you can create multiple time sessions. You can create 15, 30, an hour, five minutes, whatever suits you. Now, buffer time is a useful feature. Say, you know, you, you want your calendar to be available, but you know at 12 p.m. you have lunch. So I would turn on buffer time and say, you know, give me at least 15 minutes between meetings so that I have time to, you know, use the bathroom or do something. Um, and then after meetings, give me at least 15 minutes to, to finish up the meeting if it goes over. Buffer time just means that there's times that your customers cannot book customers, meaning students or faculty or parents. Um, and uh, this will be kind of your, your time zone here. Again, you can do hours or minutes for buffer time. I'm going to go ahead and leave that off for now. And you, by the way, you can book time yourself. And uh, for example, if you know 
you want to book office hours with a student or a faculty member, you can do it yourself using bookings. And then once it sends the, that person an email, they can cancel or reschedule if you toggle this thing on. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that on there. Now, you know, some uh, faculty members or educators or admins want meetings with multiple people. So you can increase the number of attendees per office hour if you'd like here. And this number can go, you know, all the way up to don't know the limit here, but I'm assuming you don't want a hundred person office hour. So for now, I'm going to keep it at one here. Um, the price. So bookings is kind of originally used for business purposes, but again, you don't have to put a, uh, a price there or you can put free. Uh, I'm just going to say price not set. And these notes will only be for you to view. You know, for example, if you want to remind yourself what this is for, this is for office hours on a general 30 minute calendar. This is only viewable to you. You can make custom fields as well. For example, if you want the booking, you definitely want the email because you want to know who uh, booked it. You might want the phone number, you might want the address, and then you also might want them to put in notes. For example, it's very, very helpful to me as a teacher when I, um, when I put customer notes in because if I don't have notes, I don't know what the office hour is in advance. And I want to know what the office hours is all about, so I want them to put in notes here. So making it required will, will only allow them to book the meeting if they actually put this information in there. And you can add your own question or drop down question as well. So for example, if you say, you know, for example, um, choose which lecture to cover. You can add in different options like lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, and the student will have to choose one of these options before making the booking. So then you'll know exactly what you want to, uh, what they want to cover. So I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to make it uh, required as well. And then I don't want these two. I just want email notes and then that drop down question here. OK. This section will allow you to add a reminder and confirmation email for the student or faculty member that books the office hour or appointment. So by default, Microsoft Bookings will add a one day reminder which will send them an email one day before the office hour. Just a quick reminder that your service is coming up soon. You can edit this to, you know, say, just a quick reminder that your office hour is coming up soon. Please be sure to have your materials ready. You can add new reminders as well, so you can add multiple reminders. So for example, I'm going to add a reminder two hours before, and I'm actually going to send it to everyone. I'm just going to say reminder that your office hour is coming up in two hours. This will send not only a reminder to the person who booked the appointment, but it's going to send it to me as a staff member as well. Now, once they book the appointment, they're going to get an immediate reminder as well. So you can add a customized tool here or uh, instructions or confirmation. So for example, thank you for booking with Mr. Umer. Please log in to Canvas and download the office hour pack before attending. So you can do that. Then you can also do something called adding a text message notification. 
So you can give the option to people who book appointments to give themselves text message notifications uh, for the appointment. This is uh, provided um, for free, no additional cost, but there might be a limit uh, uh, maybe imposed on the number of free SMS messages uh, for each month. This can change. So, you know, I would again just take a look at if you want if you want to enable text messages or if you don't. For now, I'm just going to enable it. You want to make sure you, this is checked so that it shows on your booking page. And then using the default scheduling policy will kind of give you a default scheduling policy. So how many, how much lead time are you allowed? How much uh, increments are allowed between the meetings? If you uncheck that, you can make your own custom policy. So for example, if you want to show the meetings between 30 minute increments, you can change that. Lead time for bookings and cancellations. So for example, I'm going to do 24 hours, but you, know, you could always change that and increase or decrease the lead time. And then the maximum amount of lead time is by default 365 days. So I'm going to keep that defaulted. And then, you know, email notifications are, um, are checked here. If I, you know, for example, if I uncheck that, I'll be able to check these things like send a meeting invite to the customer. So by default, Bookings actually sends an email, but if you want, you can also send a meeting invite. So I'm going to actually keep that checked right there. And if you have multiple staff members, for example, if you put in TAs or other staff members that work with you, you can allow the customers or the Bookings people the ability to choose a specific person. So I'm just going to keep that checked for now. And uh, down here, which let me just try to scroll down here. Going to attempt to keep this up here. Great. Down here is something called availability, which allows the service to be booked when staff are free. If you wish to customize this further, you can do that. This books when the staff are free, and this looks at your Outlook calendar to determine when you're free. However, you can always customize it by creating custom hours that recur every week. So for example, once you do that, this list comes up and allows you to customize every single day which, which time you're free. So you can customize it to your liking. You can add multiple hours within a day. So you can go ahead and play with that, you know, however you want. A lot of educators might only set a certain time for office hours, meaning every single day they only want, you know, maybe four to five or five to five to six or three to two, you know, depending on the day, but it's only one time. This might be better for you rather than just letting bookings look at your Outlook calendar. For me, I'm going to set it when I'm free, which is my Outlook calendar. And then um, at the very bottom, you'll be able to assign different staff members. If you have multiple members, you can assign multiple people. I only have one, so I'm going to keep it for just me. When I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and press save. Now, as you can see, I have office hours here. And they're for 30 minutes. The last tab I'm going to have you guys look at is called business information. Business information will allow you to name your business or your, your service and then uh, let people know what, what you're actually offering. So I'm going to call it anatomy course. It's online is the address. The phone number, you know, if I want to add a phone number, I can. This is where all the, you know, anyone who's booking with me they're going to email this email. By default, it just goes through UIW email. So I would keep it that unless, for example, you have a separate email you want to manage all this from. The website can be, you know, your own website. 
privacy policy is very important. You know, link it to your university's privacy policy on online if you have one. You can set a terms and condition. Colleges, universities, my type. Currency, you don't need to worry about. A logo is very important. Um, you know, you wanna you wanna give kind of a good um, logo for for people to look at when they're on your bookings page. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this Microsoft Store here and save that. And then uh, right here is is something called business hours. This is the general amount of hours that you are kind of available or teaching or in, in session or in school. By default, it's from eight to five, but you can definitely amend those. So for example, on Monday, you know, at 12, every time you're gonna go to lunch or you have meetings, just put, you know, eight to, I'm gonna say, 11.45, then I'm going to add a different time to put 1.15 to 5. And that way, I've put in some time for me from 12 or 11.45 to 1.15, where they cannot book me. It will not be available to book. And again, this can be done via business hours. This can be done in the, the services page for that, that individual service. It can be done a numerous amount of ways. You can simply just block off time on your Outlook calendar and it won't show within bookings. So it can work either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Okay. So I've done one service, which is office hours. I've put in the staff members, that's just me. Um, I made it so that it's gonna look at my Outlook calendar and I put in all the information that I need. Okay, so how does this look? How do I actually um, interact with bookings? So again, we go back to the bookings page and this is my page. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And if you do have questions at this point, feel free to put it in the chat or raise your hand. This is a good point to kind of ask questions about all of the features that we just put in. All right, so we're on our anatomy course bookings page. This bookings page shows the two services that I have on bookings. The initial consult, which is there by default, and again, you can delete this, tells me, you know, what the description is. The office hours, which tells me it's a 30 minute office hour, it's an online meeting, and then my calendar, and more details. So let's book an example appointment. So I've come to this page and I wanna book uh, an office hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and select office hour here. As you can see, it's updating the calendar and giving me an option for the staff. So if I click on anyone and I have multiple people, it'll show me everyone's availability on the grid. Now I'm going to click Kara and I'm going to go ahead and look at the different times. So I see there's a lot of time open, so I'll go ahead and pick one time. I'll pick 10 a.m. August 27th, 10 a.m. with Kara Coleman. Now down here, remember how I put that I wanted the time zone. All times are in Pacific time. If I'm a student and I want to make sure I'm in the right time, I can pick my time zone from the list here. There's no need to just stick to Pacific. Okay, I have to, you know, I don't have a, it doesn't say book anywhere. I have to add my details. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add my details. Omer, omersufi at gmail.com. I want to cover the class content from lecture three. Actually, I'm going to put this. That'll be easier to show you all. OK. And still, I don't have an area to book, so I have to provide additional information. And here's that option that I put down by uh, customization. Choose which lecture to cover. Lecture three. OK. And then over here, I can say, remember, get booking and confirmation via text message. So I can do that there. And remember, Microsoft Teams does have a place for or an app on the phone. So you can totally do it on the phone as well. But I'm good for now, so I'm going to just click book here. All right, and now I've booked my appointment. So naturally the question is, how does it look from the teacher's end and how does it look from the booker's end? So let's go ahead and take a look once this books. And while it's booking, let me know if you have any questions. The first area where we're actually going to take a look at where it books is the teacher's perspective. So once this is done booking, we're going to go ahead Oh, there we go. Thanks for booking with us. You'll get an email confirmation shortly. So I'll press OK. This is a link to my booking. Uh, I can cancel it, I can reschedule, or I can create a new booking. And this, this page will always be as accessible from the email confirmation. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my email. Go to Outlook here. And there we go. There's a new booking. So there's a new booking from Umer. I see that. Office hours with me. Thursday, I have the time. And then I have the join link too. I have some additional information as well. OK, so I can join the Teams meeting from here, but notice Thursday, August 27th. So in my calendar, I should be able to see that. So I'm going to go to my calendar here. August 27th. Oh, there it is. There it is, office hours, Umer. So it's already scheduled and it will remind me to join the Microsoft Teams meeting during that time. So if I click on that on Outlook or whatever email application I'm using, I see the join button here for that specific uh, booking. And then when I go into Microsoft Teams, I'll be able to see that as well. Oops. Trying to minimize this, but I'm not having the best success. There we go. So just like um, we mentioned last time, the Microsoft Teams calendar is integrated with your Office calendar. So there's the meeting right there. I can double click and join that as well. And then from the customer or from my perspective, since I booked the appointment, I just go ahead and go into my email and I see it and it is a optional um, uh, request or an optional meeting that I can go ahead and attend. 
So let's take a look at that. I'll go ahead and share my screen from my perspective. So give me one moment. So as you can see here, um, I went ahead and opened the email and there it is. There is my, uh, my request here. Okay. So this is a very simple way to, to um, help you organize your office hours into a landing page, which is very easy to track and very easy for your students to, to take a look at. So I'm going to go ahead and reshare my screen here. Are there any questions so far um, as to bookings or are there any, any other questions on you know, how do I do something that I that I want to do? Or is there something like this available in bookings? Any questions like that? All right, if I can ask, uh, is anyone planning to implement this tool? Or have you already implemented this tool? Feel free to type in the chat or come off mute and uh, let us know. All right, so, oh great, great. The Center for Veterans Affairs has implemented it, awesome. Great, so uh, again, just like I mentioned, uh, your bookings customers can also reschedule, cancel, or create a new one within this page here. Rescheduling is very simple. It looks something like this, where you can just pick a new time here. It'll easily update the, um, the booking below, and you'll get the notification. You can also cancel the booking here or just schedule a new one. So let's go back, and I do want to show you what happens now that we have a booking in there. So now that we have a booking, you can see right here that my customers page has a uh, when in when there's myself, Umer here. I can create some notes here for Umer. You know, if I, for example, want to note that this person has, you know, this phone number, this email, this address, or, you know, this is a student who needs help with this section. That way, you know, with any future appointments, I'll know, you know, what the student needs from me or what this faculty member or community member needs. There we go. And here in my calendar, I'm able to see, you know, if I go to a month view here, that there's my first appointment in pink. Oh, great, thank you for the link. Let's go ahead and take a look at that link. This is for the Center of Veterans Affairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at their bookings page for some inspiration. Very cool. Um, again, this is integrated right within the uh, website for UIW. So very cool. And I can see like you can schedule email telephone or schedule an appointment and it takes them to the bookings page for the Center, um, Center for Veterans Affairs. Great. Awesome. So like I said, you know, this 
uh, great. This uh, IT, IT help desk also uses bookings to schedule appointments. Very cool. So like I said, you know, you can have the default options that you have for bookings. Again, you can also customize it based on what kind of service you want to offer. So, you know, when you add an online meeting, you know, by default, it adds to Microsoft Teams, but you could also include um, other things. Like, for example, if you want Zoom, you could uh, add it as an online meeting, but then add a Zoom link here. That's totally fine. You can customize this to anywhere, any way that you want uh, within, within bookings. And it's generally, you know, very good for you if you customize it to the liking or to the, the purpose of your actual uh, service here. Now with the booking page, you know, it's going to go over some more things here, but um, uh, yes. So in, in general, you know, what you want to do with your bookings page is you want to make sure the availability is based on when you're free, but sometimes you're not free during your calendar events, or it might be it might be a little confusing for you to uh, to just make your whole calendar available. So that's when we want to create custom hours. So custom hours are a very useful tool for creating reoccurring events um, that don't necessarily conform to your calendar. So for example, I don't want to be free between 8 a.m. and 11.45 a.m. I only want to be free between 1.15 and 1.15 and perhaps 3. I'm just going to make some arbitrary time here. On Tuesdays, I don't want to be bookable at all. So I'm going to take that out. On Fridays, I don't want to be bookable at all. On Wednesdays, you know, I'm available only in the morning from a very strict set of times. 10 and on Thursday, I'm only available until, you know, 830. Right, 45, let's just put that. So if I go ahead and save that and publish it, I'll go to my bookings page and I'll see that things will change for me. Uh oh, looks like nothing is open. So let's go ahead and fix that. Should be okay here. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. So once this does update, we'll see these times kind of um, only go to when available and not be so ubiquitous like they are here. So then we should also go to the services and make sure that this time is the same. Great, here we go. So then I'll save that. Then I'll refresh this. There we go. So starting this month here, as you can see in September, I'm only available on Mondays and Fridays at the certain times that I put. So I can change this on a weekly basis. I can change this on a monthly basis. I can always go into the specific service and change it by a service by service base. So 
So currently the general availability is when free, not bookable, or by custom hours, which is recurring weekly. So my suggestion, if for example, you wanna do something custom that recurs every month, but not week, would be to select bookable when staff is free, and then go into Outlook here, go into your Outlook, and um, add, you know, add calendar blocks. So for example, in your calendar, if you add, you know, in your calendar, if you add a calendar block for any time, you know, between eight to five, whenever your business hours are, that will not show on bookings. So generally you wanna leave spaces that are open for bookings. And so that's another way you could do it where you don't have to fall in between the the general hour i'm sorry the general weekly recurring or the general recurring you can customize it based on your calendar which is what i do i normally let um, bookings look at my office 365 calendar and book based on that and of course i get the email notifications and, you know, if, for example, I as a teacher or as a um, as an instructor need to cancel the booking, I can go ahead and go into my calendar here. And uh, edit it or just cancel it from here so I can just click on cancel and it will let me send an email to that person based on what I'm canceling for. And then, like I mentioned in the beginning, Bookings gives you some helpful product tips right here. So, for example, adding a buffer time is pretty easy. You can just click on that and it will show you how to add a buffer time. So this takes you straight to the support page, which allows you to add um, to, your, to your Bookings page. Another one is how to customize your Bookings page as well. It's a lot of different options for you to take a look at here. And then way more options, which I definitely recommend, you know, like adding a staff member, setting reminders, getting the Microsoft Bookings app on, on the phone. So there is a Bookings app for iOS, there's one for Android, and then there's a view only mode as well for yourself. And then, you know, as a bookkeeping or kind of a compliance a tool, you can export your booking activities for the past 30 days or 120 days using a TSV file. So for example, if you want to keep a record of, you know, how many office hours you've been having, who are they with, how long were they, you can export this view as well. This is more useful for businesses, but it can be handy in an education setting. And then, like I said in the very beginning, you can have multiple booking pages. So you can have one for anatomy. If you're an admin, you can have one for the university admin. You can create a lot of different uh, booking pages here. And again, bookings is not just for yourself but you can add multiple people. So I'm gonna add Adele, for example. And once I add this person, it'll populate their email and phone number, and I can set custom hours for this person as well. Now, this is very useful for, you know, if you have a staff member or a TA or, uh, you know, other staff members that you want to give the responsibility for um, ma managing the bookings, you want to make sure they're here. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Oh, yes. Let's just add that, for example. And I want to make sure that this is not a guest, but this is an actual user.
All right, so I'm just going to add one more time. There we go. So yeah, that automatically populate, populates their meet, their um, their address, and I can add them down here as a viewer or an administrator. A viewer can see all the bookings, but they can't modify them. They only have read access. And an administrator can edit, delete, add, remove staff members. They can manage the entire thing for you. So if this was just a TA, you know, I would make them maybe a administrator because I want them to handle all of the bookings on my behalf. And so, you know, I can say, okay, if there are any office hours on their own calendar, which affect, then I'll have that there. But, you know, I want them to be available all these times, but maybe not Friday. So I'll go ahead and save. I've added them as a staff member, and now I want to make sure, and they can do this themselves, but I want to make sure they are on the office hour booking. So I'm going to add them as a staff member here. OK. Assign, and then I'm going to go to my bookings page. And as you can see here, now I have both members, Adele and Kara. So if I choose Adele, the TA, all the times are available. And I can take myself off, or I can uh, have us both. So very easy to add multiple people to your booking and um, keep it all uh, ready for you to go. No matter how you're running your system, your class, your admin uh, structure, anything like that. All right, so we're at, the, we're at the last five minutes and so I'm gonna leave it open for questions. So any questions that you guys might have, anything you wanna see again, um, any other you know use cases that you want to have seen shown on on bookings? Let's go ahead and ask them now. Feel free to raise your hand. Uh, so, Dr. Suleiman, that currently um, there is no Zoom integration by default. Now, your university IT can make a change there, uh, but that's on the back end. By default, it is integrated with Microsoft Teams. Now they've already might they already might have made that backend change uh, for UIW. I noticed that the the Veterans Affair um, has their online meeting as a Zoom meeting, so it might be uh, customized. I would check with your IT department. But by default, uh, it comes with Teams. You're welcome. Awesome, so Terrence just answered that question. Zoom is working, Blackboard is sluggish, but working. So great, you guys already have it integrated with your solution. So all you have to do is again, click online meeting and it should automatically schedule everything for you. Awesome, were there any other questions? Any Anything else you guys wanted to see? It's a pretty straightforward service, but uh, really does uh, give you a great perspective on on um, scheduling things like office hours, where it would be really easy through um, uh, it would be really easy through in person, but even in a hybrid sense, you know, instead of juggling all those emails or juggling um, different types of communications, you can just have a simple page, attach it to the signature of your email, for example and people can click on it and book some time with you. Uh, I use it for all of my meetings, so it's a very, very um, robust tool. All right, if there are no more questions, I will, um, so next week we are going to do a little bit of a change. Uh, next week we're gonna cover Flipgrid and some more integrations for asynchronous learning. Uh, so that will be another great uh, meeting there uh, to learn about more tools for your benefit. And I'll go ahead and stay here for a couple more minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and put this up for all of you. Please, please uh, take this survey uh, for us here. 
this survey will help us um, gauge uh, the session today and it will give us useful feedback. So please go ahead and just take a picture of that QR code and uh, go ahead and fill out that survey on your on your own time. All right, it was a pleasure for you guys to uh, come to this meeting today. Really appreciate all the patience you guys have. And hopefully, you know, this tool like Microsoft Bookings will come in handy to you. I think you guys are in session again for classes this week, or if not, you're starting today or tomorrow or soon. And so good luck with that. And um, I really hope everything goes well. And we'll see you next week for Flipgrid and more.